ladies and gentlemen, to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries here in our main forum. I would like to invite you to sit down and uh, participate in the next talk because it's very interesting. If you think of fuel cells, you might think of fuel cell cars, you might think of uh, uninterrupted power supply, you might think of micro CHP, but fuel cells are entering the air already. So our topic today will be fuel cell and hybrid systems for aircraft application. So we are uh, welcoming here the head of energy system integration of the Institute of Technical Thermodynamics at the German Aerospace Center. And he is also the coordinator of the electrical aviation at this institute, Professor Dr. Josef Kallo. Professor Kallo, very good to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Have a seat. So, uh, when you have a question, just raise your hand. I'll be with the microphone right with you, and we can discuss with Professor Kallo about fuel cells and hybrid systems for aircraft application. Well, how did you how did you manage that? That uh, Exactly today on Spiegel Online, there was a big uh, article about electrical flying. Um, so what we see is uh, that this electric flying based mainly on batteries, but uh, nowadays also on fuel cells, um, is taking into the air. So we see companies in the US like Uber or like Google or like bigger companies who are very interested in implementing electric flying into everyday transportation possibilities. And uh, we will see in the future, I think, more of these um, conferences, but also news, because there is a chance to build up such systems. And uh, we will see, I think, also a takeoff of bigger aircraft, not only the smaller, which you have seen on Spiegel Online. Okay. Electric flying, I can imagine it's not so easy, you know, because, well, I, I, I can imagine a Pedelec, also an electric car, but uh, you need a lot of batteries, so, so electric flying, you, you need to, to carry all these batteries with you. That's, that's a disadvantage, isn't it? Yes, but on the other side, this is um, the goal which we would like to achieve. We would like, like to minimize the batteries, so we will have systems which will have a hybrid system, a fuel cell hybrid system in the aircraft application. And we will have fuel cells to deliver the energy for crews flying, but we will use the batteries for start uh, takeoff capabilities. And also, we will use the batteries to recharge, so to re recuperate the energy by, um, so during the final phase of descent. So, with a hybrid fuel cell airplane, you don't need to take too many batteries into the air. That's the advantage. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, you just have the fuel cell there, but the fuel cell itself couldn't bring the power for the, for the takeoff. So, the fuel cell itself it depends on the aircraft. So, momentarily, we have a four passenger aircraft. Um, and with this aircraft, we could start only on fuel cells. But it is uh, much better to have, for safety reason, also a battery in parallel. Okay, and uh, the fuel cell is just like, like we can say in, in a serial hybrid, as, as we say in automotive applications, because, yes. because it does not directly run the motor, but it runs the battery that runs the electric motor itself. So during the takeoff phase, we have the fuel cell and battery in parallel. Both of them are delivering electrical energy for the motor. And then during the cruise phase, only the fuel cell delivers energy. So we have uh, some kind of parallel serial hybrid. So that is a study or, or is it an existing uh, airplane already? So since uh, September 2016, we know that this is also um, a possibility to fly. So we have the first uh, four passenger airplane in the air. Um, and we know also that it's possible not to only fly with four passengers, but maybe with like 10, 15, up to 40 passengers. Yeah, that's, the, that's a specific uh, um, uh, airplane that, yeah, that has two fuselages. Uh, and, uh, and and can take two passengers each, so the maximum exactly. uh, a load would be four passengers, but that's not the end. As you say, well, you can yeah. even have eight passengers. Where's where's the end of, of that, that uh, ladder? So from today's perspective, I think we can say um, the end of the vision, or the vision is something like 40 to maximum 60 passengers. 
and this is not because of the fuel cell. This is related to the voltages which we can have in the aircraft application. Um, so when we are talking about like a 40 seater, then we talk about like 1 to 1.5 megawatt of fuel cell power. This is feasible because the fuel cell is modular. But then we have to talk also about voltages of around, let's say, 1,500 volt to deliver the very high power. And um, in aircraft application, there is an issue with the high voltage due to some corona exchange um, and also some currents due to uh, some, some um, plasma effects. There are quite a lot of fuel cells out there, and fuel cells normally not only produce electricity, but also heat. Yes. So in, in the air, you don't want to have too much heat. It mustn't burn at, at any case, you know. So you need a low temperature PEM fuel cell probably up there. Yeah, so um, that is an issue with the fuel cell in aircraft application. What we have seen is we achieve efficiencies of around 50% so, um, in the system. But even then, we have to deploy 50% of the heat uh, of the reaction. Um, and we are using at the moment a low temperature fuel cell running of to up to 80 degrees C. Um, and this is really for us the first issue which we'll encounter in, in the aviation, how to deploy as efficient as possible the heat. Because using air from the outside is always destroying the laminar flow around the aircraft. So every intake, every possibility to use air from the outside is, let's say, efficient damaging. And what we would like to do is we would like to have an aerodynamically efficient aircraft and on the same time a possibility to cool down the systems. And this is a challenge. And, and this is a special development of, of DLR, what, what you did, to, to, to uh, <laughs> develop these, these fuel cells. So I would call it it's a um, team effort. So the DLR is working on this, but on the same time, we have the fuel cell manufacturer, we have the aircraft uh, integrator, we have the aircraft producer, and we had a very, very good team which um, worked on all that, uh, let's say, on all problems and all issues. Yeah. So, so what you already pointed out, this is a, a hybrid fuel cell system because it has a fuel cell and a battery. Yes. Uh, I've also read about a hybrid system that Airbus and Siemens is developing until 2030, but this runs on kerosene. So yes. your, yours does not, you know. What do you think about these planes, what they're doing? They also want to fly electrically. Yeah, so um, we have to talk about electrical motors in aviation. So there is definitely, um, let's say, an, an achievement if we could have electrical motors with a propeller or with a ducted fan um, or with a propulsor in the aircraft, because that gives us the freedom to install those motors at sites which today with a turbine are not possible. Um, even if we get the electrical energy from a gas turbine with a generator and also a hybrid uh, done with batteries, we have a chance to fly with a higher efficiency. So this could be an interesting way to have bigger aircraft in a manner of 100 seater plus and fly also, let's say, with kerosene but with a higher efficiency. And there is also a point by using electrical motors, we have also the chance to lower the noise. So even that by might using be very interesting, yes. Uh -huh. Even by using just one turbine with a redundant uh, battery, we have a chance at takeoff, where the airplane is nearby the population and so on. We have a chance to lower the noise by using those electric motors. It becomes they can more and be more important for very airport areas. Uh, exactly. uh, cities are, uh, are becoming bigger, people are living nearby. So yep. if you can manage to take the, the takeoff and landing without the turbines, would be wonderful. You know? Yeah, or with a low power turbine. A yeah. low power turbine, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. But with fuel cells, you can't, it's, it's all very quiet. You know, a fuel cell does not yes. any, any sound, yeah. so that's, yeah. that's even better. So, are there any questions from your side? Just uh, raise your hand if you would like to know a little bit more about fuel cells hybrid uh, airplanes. Uh, you can do so at any time. 
So I, I go on. Um, the, the maximum speed of this high four you, you developed, it's called high four? Yeah. Uh, should, uh, hydrogen four. Hi, I, hydrogen and four passengers. Four passengers, yeah. that's the reason. Uh, the maximum speed, uh, how, how fast could that uh, airplane be? So this airplane is designed for something like 230 kilometers an hour. Uh, at the moment, we fly it something between 140 and 190. 200 kilometers an hour. So for us, it's not so important to go fast. For us, it's important to gain experience in the aircraft application in real life. And the major challenge with that was to have a higher altitude. And at that higher altitude, we have also lower air pressure. And we are using that air from the outside. So the challenge was to implement controls which can deal with lower pressure. Is, is the fuel cell in any case uh, uh, affected by, by lower pressure? That Mainly, if the system is working well, then uh, with a very, very small percentage. All right, okay. So um, the other thing is not, not uh, the one thing is the speed, but the other thing is the range, which is important yeah. for real, uh, real application. So uh, what range can you gain then? So at the moment, we have a range of around 750 to 800 kilo kilometers, how it is today now. We Which have you can, can reach any airport in Germany. If you fly from Germany somewhere, you can reach <laughs> yes. any airport in Germany. Exactly. So the business case with this type of uh, aircraft would be to have a kind of air taxi. So to have a smaller airplane, like a four-seater, six, maybe ten-seater, and then have a very flexible network of airplanes to fly around in a regional traffic to connect, let's say, Stuttgart with Friedrichshafen, or maybe Stuttgart with Kassel, or those short connections, which are, let's say, very long time connections by car or by train, but very convenient for an aircraft. So just as an example, to drive from Stuttgart to Friedrichshafen, it takes you like two hours, almost, maybe two hours, 30 minutes. To fly straight from the airport to the airport, it takes like 30 minutes, 28 minutes. So that could be something which can be interesting as a business case in the future. And there are a lot of airports in Germany newly built yes. that nobody uses. You know, I'm from Braunschweig. There's yeah. an airport nobody uses except of DLR, yeah. of course. Um, uh, there would be a business case for these airports as well. So they would be happy to have some, some airplanes uh, flying at these, these, uh, on these airports. Yeah, that's correct. So alone in Germany, we have 330, something around 330 airports which we can use. And that means that there is a huge possibility to um, upgrade regions. So if we could have, as an example, from Stuttgart to Waldürn, which is in the north of Stuttgart, it takes like 18 minutes to fly. By car, it's almost traffic jammed. So it's, it's, it's a nightmare to drive by car. And then you could have very low noise aircraft very fast reaching aircraft, even if it's only 120 kilometers. And with that, we can upgrade regions. So you could live in Stuttgart and work, so work in Stuttgart, but you could live outside the town. I know, Professor Carlo, you're, you're, you fly yourself, uh, yes. uh, uh, machines, airplanes. Uh, did you ever fly the High 4 already? Or, or no. will you soon? <laughs> uh, hopefully, but at the moment, uh, it's a kind of uh, investment, uh, how should I say? So a test pilot is flying that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not, not allowed yet. You didn't allow yourself <laughs> to do so yet. Yeah. Uh, but also what I've learned, professors nowadays, you know, they're entrepreneurs uh, sometimes, and you are one. You, you founded your your, uh, your startup business already. It's called H to Fly. Uh, exactly for that business we were just uh, uh, talking about this business case. Exactly. So, what we have done is we um, built um, a small company which takes care about the, the aircraft, so the HI4, and uh, we also provide services for implementation of the electrical systems and of the electrical electrochemical systems. And then a part which no scientist would like to do is the documentation and the preparation for homologation. So that is a, a very boring work, but on the other side, it's very, very important to get uh, the permit to fly. Okay, and when you got it, what, what do you expect uh, the, the first electric taxi uh, on air? So it depends on how it, we move on with the industrial engagement. So 
Um, if there is uh, money for, for developing this for, let's say, a real case application, uh, H2, so HI4 is today like a platform for testing, uh, then I would say in five to seven years, we could have like a four or six seater flying around, very low noise, so astonishing uh, minus 30 to 40 dBA lower in noise that we encounter today with a comparable Cessna aircraft and also with very low emissions or no emissions with a fuel cell battery hybrid. So that could be something which can boost up the individual so mobility in, in, in crowded areas. I would like to give you the opportunity once again if you would like to know a little bit more from Professor Callow about uh, flying with fuel cells, fuel cell airplanes, hybrid airplanes, just let me know. Um, well, if you think of, of flying and, and hydrogen, you know, many people th still think of the Hindenburg. Oh, please not. <laughs> we have to touch that topic, I think. Uh, what, what did burn there? What, what, what was the reason that, that the Hindenburg was, was falling from the air and then burning <laughs> all over? I think this stage here have heard this question for like a hundred times. That's right. <laughs> so for the hundred and one time... I would say that was the aluminum coating on the Hindenburg. So that started the fire. So please don't uh, take hydrogen and air um, always with the Hindenburg. So, um, but, but to summarize it, it, it yeah. hydrogen is a safe uh, fuel nowadays, isn't it? We handle hydrogen in the same way as an automotive company is handling that. And we handle hydrogen in the same way like in a, in a stationary storage. So there are rules and requirements which have to be fulfilled. And with that in the background, we, we have a safe plane. Uh, and uh, to talk about hydrogen and flying, uh, I also have to disappoint you, uh, Professor Kalle, because you're not the first one who flies with hydrogen. Yeah. It was Tupolev who did it. Uh, what was it? 1988, as yes. far as I know. 1988 together. Oh, no, th these days not. They, they flew alone and they, they flew with hydrogen. How could they do that? So, as I remember, it was a liquid hydrogen storage. I see the picture bef in front of me. You have to imagine they had like hundreds of two-liter small bottles um, so with liquid hydrogen on it. And then they took that gas to implement that gas into a gas turbine. So the Tupolev 144 was, uh, as I remember, a three-turbine aircraft. And then they used one turbine for the hydrogen. And that's what, what uh, Airbus wanted to pick up and, and invented the cryoplane. Uh, we had these planes here on this group exhibit like 20 years ago or something. Yes. Uh, they, they looked very funny, like, like two planes, uh, one above the other, because the upper plane is just the cryo tank. Industry is not following that path anymore. Fuel cells are the, the application of the future. Huh? So at the moment, um, we are at the edge of the feasibility with our project. There are some projects also in the US and one, as I, I know, in, in, in Japan. But um, it will be good to have such concepts in the future also. At the moment, with our projects, we are at the edge of the feasibility. I'm really looking... Oh. I'm very sorry, you know, we just run out of time, it's now 20 past, <laughs> but Professor Kalle will be available for, for your question, of course, just the one minute. So uh, I'm really looking forward to the electric uh, air taxi with, uh, run with fuel cells mm -hmm. and hydrogen. Uh, it's going to be very interesting and whoever wants to contact Professor Kalle, he will be there at the booth of DLR just uh, over to your right hand side. Thank you very much, Professor Kalle, for the interesting talk to you. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll proceed now with the next interview here on stage with Rick Raschiller, Vice President Hydrogen Products of Hexagon, and uh, Dr. Michael Kleschinski, former CEO of Experian Energy and Environment GmbH, and now Executive Vice President of Hexagon, with the topic, two market leaders joining forces. So please stay tuned. Thank you very much. <laughs> 